Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having us. I feel like I fit in here really well because I'm full-blooded Italian. Every Christmas, we make these big, fat, homemade raviolis. In college, I was forced to sing in four different languages as a vocal major. And then my first job was at an Orthodox Jewish nursing home. I once dated a Spanish gentleman, and I had a German dog. So I'm really prepared for this. <laughs> But thanks for having us today. I'm the music therapist here at Metro Health Medical Center, and I primarily work in physical medicine and rehabilitation, which used to be located here at the main campus. It's now down the road at OBC, which is considered our old Brooklyn campus. And that's where we treat people with major traumas and neurologic disorders. Um, such as brain injury, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injuries, and strokes, along with orthopedic problems like hip replacements, knee replacements, and so forth. So I use music to treat them and help them recover. I do not entertain them. I'm not there to entertain, although I once was an entertainer. But now I'm using actual music therapy and specifically neurologic music therapy techniques that are all backed by research that have all been standardized to help people actually recover from stroke and brain injury, the deficits of stroke, brain injury, and spinal cord injury. I'm going to tell you a couple stories about that. Um, we have techniques that help can help people speak again after having a stroke. Do you know anybody that ever had a stroke where they can't talk? Well, that's called aphasia. Did you know that there is a technique that helps them talk in the very first session? I've had family members that said while they were here in the hospital, their, their loved one as a patient in the hospital, they couldn't talk for three weeks. And then they go there, and if the doctor refers them to me, and they start talking, the, the family members are just crying their eyes out. It's truly amazing. We have techniques that actually can help people walk again after having a stroke or a brain injury. It's called rhythmic auditory stimulation. And I'm going to talk about how music affects the brain and why this happens in a minute. The first technique was called melodic intonation therapy. We have techniques that help people use their arms again, who are semi-paralyzed, either from spinal cord injuries or strokes. Um, they can start using it again. Uh, we have techniques that help with memory skills, using music to help people remember again. Um, did you know that music helps with respiration and lung capacity so that they don't get pneumonia, which is a major issue in the hospital? We have techniques that reduce pain. Music can actually reduce pain, and I can explain how that works in a minute. So music can help with a lot of things, even sleeping at night when they have problems sleeping in the hospital. Um, again, these are all neurologic-based techniques. That means it's based on how the brain works. Did you know that brain scientists are now uh, with the help of brain imagery, since the 1990s, we have things called PET scans, MRIs, CAT scans, and through watching the brain, we know that the language of the brain, meaning the neurons firing to send messages back and forth, and how it goes down the spinal column for muscle recovery, is the same as the language in music the same. And I do a presentation on this. And I show with brain imaging how music changes the brain. Did you know that musicians' brains are different than non-musician brains? Music can actually get those neurons firing more and making new neural pathways. That's how these techniques work. So if there's a part of the brain that has been damaged, because of a brain injury or because of a stroke, through these music techniques, we can reroute those neural pathways to go to the healthy part of the brain and teach that part of the brain what the damaged part of the brain used to do. Um, it's very, very fascinating. And since the 90s, with all this imaging, um, we've learned how to do that. It's still progressing. 
Um, so I have a specialized training in the neural recovery music therapy techniques. Not all music therapists do. There are many music therapists who work with different populations, um, but my specialty is rehab and recovery, so I received that training to help me with that. There's lots of, lots of research out there about um, neurologic music therapy techniques. And um, when people see that the music to help them walk again after being um, paralyzed for a while um, or having a stroke or brain injury and they start seeing how the rhythm affects their walk, they're just crying their eyes out. There is even some research out there that shows that people who are, this, that's called gait training. Gait training is walking. There are, there's research studies out there that actually show that people who use the music with their gait training do better than traditional therapies. And the reason why is because when you use music in the techniques, it's now using another system in the brain called the auditory cortex not just the motor cortex. And the auditory cortex in the brain is very sensitively connected to the motor system in the brain. So when you listen to music, it actually fires those motor neurons in the brain to work. It activates them again if they were damaged. And so that is felt through the spinal column and into the muscles and helps with that recovery. When we take away the auditory stimulation, we're not using as much of the brain it happens at a slower rate. Um, so I find it extremely rewarding when we see, you know, I've had spinal cord patients who couldn't move their feet and for the first time in music started tapping their feet to the rhythm. It is very key to use music in motor recovery. Um, the research shows that you and I, even without injuries, if we exercise to music, we're getting a much more efficient workout than we, if we did the same exercises without music. Music provides that rhythm structure for the movement and all you need to hear is like two beats and you anticipate where to go within a certain amount of time. The muscle does. You don't even have to think about it. Um, I, let me just give you one story and then I'm done. I know, we have to hurry. Um, I have many stories. Someday I might write a book. But um, I had a patient who was, uh, and I, I can talk about these patients, they've been given, uh, they gave me their permission in writing to talk about them, and quite frankly, many of them have been all over the news. There was a gentleman called Jory Abley, who was shot in the back of the head, downtown Cleveland, not long ago. He's an employee at the Cleveland Clinic. And he and his buddies were celebrating his birthday downtown. And they left a bar at 2 o'clock in the morning and um, got involved with these people they weren't supposed to get involved with. But to make a long story short, Jory's best friend was shot in the head point blank right near the gun. His friend fell down. Jory was upset. The gunman ran, but they came back because they thought that Jory was still alive and he could be a witness. So they made him get down on his knees. They shot him in the back of the head. Um, other people heard this going on. Lots of people called 911. They brought them to Metro Health Emergency, where the Level 1 Trauma Center. Jory's friend died instantly. Jory did not, but his parents were called in, and his parents were told, we're sorry, he is going to die. He has an unsurvivable injury, because the bullet, the bullet fragments were all over his brain, and the bone fragments of his skull were all over his brain. There's no way they could have operated. Well, he did survive trauma, and when he came to rehab, I found out he was a musician, but he couldn't use his arm at all. And they even brought in his guitar to have him play in the intensive care unit, and he couldn't, he kept dropping the pick. And he was getting depressed, the mom was getting depressed. So they called me in, and, in the, and she was pushing me off for so many days because she didn't want him to be unsuccessful again. And I said, I have techniques that can help him, just trust me. So eventually she trusted me. And in the very first session, he was playing his guitar and singing. And two weeks later, before he left, he was playing a lot at a, at a higher speed 
two months after discharge, he came back here and performed with many of my former patients who are musicians, and we put on an hour and a half concert, and Jory did two solos by himself in front of TV cameras because they couldn't believe him. Well, he's back to work today and married and doing extremely well. But he was so happy because he couldn't use his hand until he came to music. And now he got his musicianship back. Um, but music therapy isn't just for musicians, it's for everyone. But I enjoy helping people get their skills and talents back. So thanks for having us. Yeah.